we're starting tonight in the heart of Broadway. One of Sydney's busiest precincts is still a mess as we go to air, with tonnes of twisted metal still hanging overhead. The remains of a collapsed crane. It's not far from our Channel 10 studios, and Lachlan Kennedy and Jacqueline Maddock have been at the scene since the moment all this began. We'll start with Lachlan, who's the only reporter to have spoken with the crane driver. Lachlan, he single-handedly may have prevented a disaster there today. Sandra, let's make this very clear. All of this could have been a lot worse. The way the crane arm has actually fallen across the construction site has certainly saved lives. We've spoken to Glenn, as his name, the driver, just minutes after all this occurred. He was a very humble man, very shaken up, and he told us of his attempts to try and extinguish the flames. But more importantly, witnesses have told us that the crane was actually moved across the construction site, so it fell up there and not across busy Broadway. The first signs of trouble were the flames, 65 metres up, high above the University of Technology and busy Broadway. Hundreds of people spilled from the surrounding buildings onto the street where they captured the drama on their phones. Little did they know they'd be recording this spectacular and terrifying moment. I'm just grateful to be alive, really, because, you know, it could have been a pancake. This man was closer than anyone. Glenn, the driver, shaken up but alive. You were in the crane at the time, yeah, though? Yeah. A fire just began? Just began. Yeah, the fire just started. And what happened? Did you manage to rush down safely? Yeah, I got down, tried to extinguish it, but needed more than a extinguisher, I needed a bigger one. What, what about the rest of your team? Do you know if everyone's safe? Mate, every, every... They're all safe, everybody's fine. Everybody's good. Glenn's actions can't be understated. It's believed he swung the crane's arm over the construction site so it wouldn't fall on the university's courtyard or the traffic, pedestrians and hundreds of witnesses watching transfixed below. Among the hundreds of people who have piled out on the streets were the workers who were actually in the building at the time. They say this was an incredible lucky escape because they were on morning tea. Ten minutes later, this could have been a very different story. It's just after morning tea, lucky. Yeah, we just went past there and then they say, everyone go, <laughs> keep, keep running. Twenty other workmates were on a nearby roof and fire crews were also charging in to extinguish the blaze. Carnage, it wasn't good. It was just panic, everything started shaking, loud bangs. The crane belongs to Lend Lease, which is building this $170 million engineering precinct for the university. It's now an engineering nightmare. Well, Lachlan, how long is it going to take to clean up this mess and what sort of impact is it having on the traffic there? Well, Bill, as we all can see, this isn't exactly a quiet intersection at all. It's one of the busiest in the city. It reopened after four hours of being a complete evacuation zone today at about 3 p.m. But there's a section over here you can see behind me at Abercrombie Street that will be re remaining closed for at least a day. That's because there is scaffolding that's been pushed out across the road. Emergency teams are currently right up there now, poking it, prodding it to see what they can do. We're told by the union it could be a significant time before this construction site is active again, and that's because they have raised some very serious concerns. OK, Lachlan, thank you. Let's go to Jack Lomatic now. And, Jackie, the unions have had some pretty explosive things to say about this crane today. Sandra, explosive is right. The union claims that it sounded the alarm weeks ago and warned Lend Lease that this crane was faulty and it therefore posed a serious risk to workers, to pedestrians and motorists. An accident waiting to happen 65 metres above Ultimo. You waited and pointed um, around out on the street with a jib and it caught fire. There could have been hundreds of innocent standbys being killed here today. Just two weeks ago, safety concerns shut down the site. 170 workers walked off the job until Lendley's vowed to fix a gas leak on the crane. It's obvious to us that it's failed to be done. And now we've had a situation where it's put you know, hundreds of lives at risk. It's been a lesson of sorts for UTS. All our contractors have to follow very strict health and safety and requirements, and so if they were not following their contractual requirements, we'd be very concerned. The university awarded Lend Lease the $170 million project earmarked for completion next year. Hundreds of staff and students fled the campus as the fire raged next door. Some of the windows and other things were within 50 metres of the crane, so we thought it was prudent to evacuate. Not everyone got the message. I've just come out of an exam from there, so still plenty of people in there. 
tried to go out the back way, but uh, the doors were shut off and um, no signs or anything. Outside the campus, the size of the exclusion zone mirrored the size of the problem facing authorities. Well, I've been in the Fire and Rescue Service now for 29 years and this is the first time I've seen that occur. Teams of rescuers on foot and in cherry pickers worked to ensure the rest of the crane didn't collapse as well. It's another problem for Lendlease, including the recent asbestos scare at Barangaroo. It wasn't fronting the cameras today. Instead, its top execs held a garden party to toast the successful completion of another Sydney development. Well, Jackie Lendlease uh, may not be taking questions from the media, but they are having to answer some in the near future. Absolutely. 10 News put the union's claims directly to Lendlease today, Bill, and so far we're still waiting for answers to our questions, but there's no question that Lendlease and what it knew about this crane will now form the subject of not one, not two, but as many as five or six separate inquiries. Jackie Maddock, thank you. Tonight's headlines, there are five investigations underway into today's crane collapse at the University of Technology at Broadway. So let's go back to Lachlan Kennedy who's there now. Lachlan, when are things expected to return to normal there? Sandra, we're being told by the union it's going to take some significant time and this is why. Although this crane fire began at 10 o'clock this morning, we're just going to push up to the top of the crane here. As you can see, investigators have only just climbed all the way to the top to try and figure out how this fire sparked and what caused 1,000 litres of diesel fuel to burn out. You can see them right at the top, two police rescue men up there in their white and there's also a couple of engineers from Lend-Lease. We're told the corner of Abercrombie and Broadway will remain closed for at least a day and investigators are still trying to figure out the most safest way to disassemble their crane because that's what they're going to have to do. We're told that could take some time and as you said there as well, five investigations are underway including work cover, the union and of course Lendlease, which the union is claiming has some serious questions to answer because they believe this crane was faulty and Lendlease knew all about it. Lachlan Kennedy, you've been there all day. Great stuff and thanks for the update.